Hello, welcome to West Nev and the Sir, a podcast about trashy romance novels. It's going to be fun. Here's a sneak preview of what's going on. But before we get into the actual trashy novels of it, let's explain a few things. First, I'm West Nev, and there's the Sir. Uh, we don't know what we're doing. This is like a flying by the wheel kind of a deal. Nobody knows anything. But I would highly recommend, if you're going to be on this adventure, you should have a drink. Wine, beer, cocktail, whatever you're into. I personally, I am having a uh, Colossal Reserva uh, from an undetermined year. I got it at Costco. It's pretty tasty. Secondly, I dressed up because I'm reading a romance novel and it's like, you know, it's like a thing. You gotta be like, act as if. Anyways, this is just a sneak preview. I'm gonna read a random section of the first book we're going to do, Tangled by Emma Chase. Um, when rich, handsome, and arrogant means beautiful, brilliant, and ambitious. Things are about to get tangled. Random. Mm, let's go more random. Chapter 19. So that's it. That's my story. The rise, the fall, the end. And now, here I am in this lousy restaurant, Alexandra and Matthew. Oh, wait. Here I am. In this lousy restaurant, Alexandra and Matthew dragged me to, where I just finished telling them pretty much the same story I told you. When I was six, I learned how to ride a bike. Like all kids, when they first take the training wheels off, I fell. A lot. Any time it happened, Alexandra was the one who was there. She dusted me off, kissed the scrapes away, and convinced me to climb back on. So it's only natural that I expect my sister, ooh, Alexandra's the sister, back to the book, to be compassionate about my heartache, gentle, sympathetic. What I get is, you're a goddamn idiot. You know that, Drew? I bet you were starting to wonder why they call her the bitch. That's not nice. Back to the book. Well, here you go. I'm sorry. Yes, sorry is exactly what you are. Do you have any idea what, what a mess you've made? I always knew you were a spoiled and self-centered hell. I was one of the people who made you that way, but I never thought you were stupid. Huh? And I could have sworn you were born with testicles. Oh shit, what the fuck? That's not in the book. Choke on my drink. And Matthew laughs. Who's Matthew? Back to the book. I'm serious. I distinctly remember changing your diaper and seeing those cute little guys hanging there. What happened to them? Did they shrink? Disappear? Because that's the only reason I can think of to explain why you would have behaved like such a pathetic, no-balls coward. God damn, that's your sister? Back to the book. Jesus Christ, Alexandra. No, I don't even think he can fix this. Defensive anger seeps into my chest. I really don't need this right now. Not from you. I'm already down. Why the fuck are you kicking me? She scoffs. Because a swift kick in the ass is exactly what you need. Did you ever consider that... Oh, whoa, whoa, blah, 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 blah. Did you ever even consider that when Kate said they were really good, perhaps she meant they were civil? That they had decided to be friends? Part amicably? If you knew half as much about women as you think you do, you'd understand that no woman would want to end a 10-year relationship on bad terms. That doesn't make any sense. Why would anyone want to be friends with someone they used to be able to fuck and can't anymore? What would the, what would be the friggin' point? Ooh. No, you're totally off base. She shakes her head. Regardless, 
If you had acted like a man instead of a wounded little boy, you would have told her how you felt. Oh, shit. This is like a fucking sister. A look washes over Alexandra's face that I've never seen before. At least not directed at me. It's disappointment. Of course not, Drew. Why would you chase anyone when you're so content to let everyone chase you? What the hell is that supposed to mean? It means everything has always been easy for you. You're handsome, intelligent, you have a family who loves you and women who lie down for you like sacrificial lambs. And the one time you have to struggle for something you want, the one time you have to risk your heart for something who's someone who's finally worth it, what do you do? You give up. You shoot first and ask questions later. You curl up in a ball and wallow in self-pity. She shakes her head slightly and her voice softens. You didn't even try, Drew. After all that, you just threw her away. I look down at my drink. My voice is quiet with remorse. I know. I don't think I haven't thought about it. Ooh, remind. Don't think I haven't thought about it. Don't think I haven't regretted my words or lack thereof, because I have bitterly. I wish, but it's too late now. Matthew finally speaks up. It's never too late, man. The game's not over. It's just rain delayed. I look at him. Has Dolores said anything to you about Kate, about Billy? He shakes his head. Not about them. But she's had a whole lot to say about you. What do you mean? I roll that information around for a minute. Maybe she hates me because I fucked her cousin's fiance. Oh shit, you fucked her cousin's fiance? That's fucking gangster. Back to the book. Maybe she hates you because you broke her best friend's heart. Yeah, it's a toss up, no help there. Are you in love with Kate, Drew? My eyes meet Alexandra's. Yes. Is there a chance that she feels the same way? I think so. The more I thought about Kate's words and actions that weekend, the more, I, the more certain I became that Kate felt something for me, something real and deep. At least she did before I shot it all to hell. Do you want to be with her? God, yes. Then whether she's back with her ex or not is irrelevant. The question you need to ask yourself is what are you willing to do? Oh shit, that's fucking some Denzel Washington shit. Back to the book. To make this right, to get her back. And my answer to that simple, anything. Everything. My throat is tight as I confess. I'd give anything to have Kate back. Then for God's sakes, fight for her. Tell her. As her words sink in, Matthew grips my shoulder. In times like this, I always ask myself, what would William Wallace do? His eyes are serious, stern. Then his voice takes on a Scottish accent he doesn't have. I run and you won't get rejected. But years from now, would you be willing to trade all the days from now to then for a chance? Just one chance to go back and tell Kate she can take your balls and hang them from the rear view mirror of her car. But she can never take your freedom. I inserted that uh, Scottish section. It was awful. Ugh. Alexandra rolls her eyes at the Braveheart speech, and I actually laugh. The black cloud that's been sitting on my shoulders all week long finally start to lift. It's a place. In its place is... determination, all the things that make me, me, all the things I've been missing since the morning I watched Billy Warren sing. Who the fuck is Billy Warren? Matthew smacks me on the back. Go get her, man. 
I mean, look at you. What have you got to lose? He's right. Who needs dignity? Pride. They're overrated. When you've got nothing, you've got nothing left to lose. I have to go see Kate right now. And if I strike out, at least I'll go down swinging. If I crash and I burn, and she grinds my ashes into the dirt with her heel, so be it. But I have to try. Because? Well, because she's worth it. Fuck, that doesn't suck. People talk shit, but that's, uh, you know, it's a little cheesy, but it's not bad. <laughs>